I'm in uh, Manhattan, Kansas at the American Meat Science Association's Reciprocal Meat Conference with Chris Raines and Catherine Cutter from Penn State. You guys uh, introduce yourselves. Um, I'm an associate professor in food science and food safety extension specialist. Okay. I am an associate prof or assistant professor of meat science in the animal science department at Penn State. And we're talking about um, high pressure processing or high hydrostatic pressure, depending on, on who you talk to. Um, you guys mentioned uh, the, the project in Pennsylvania. Can you tell me a little bit, just a little detail about uh, what you're doing out there? Right now, we're trying to use the high hydrostatic pressure processing system um, with uh, manufactured ground beef patties, evaluating the efficacy of that system on uh, the reduction of multiple sugar toxin and And you're working with uh, two uh, processors out there? We have some plants in the state that are opening and developing high pressure systems in their plants. Okay. And, uh, and during the uh, the talk, you mentioned something about the, the in, in your early trials, it's uh, the, the pressure has actually had some impact on color. Yes. And um, you said, but you did say it's manageable. In, in what ways? Uh, you can go through different uh, time and pressure relationships, okay. as well as, as going through potential different color management ideas in terms of where it is, in terms of the color cycle, what oxidation state it's in or oxygenation state it's in, um, as well as potential processing ingredients that you could use in the product to help manage the color shift. And on a related note, you also mentioned that HPP makes uh, complete sense post-packaging um, you know, I've heard everything from doing it, the whole carcass, uh, whole muscle, that sort of thing. Um, why, uh, you know, are, are those probably just sort of novel approaches? Do they have any practical application, you know, possibilities to do sort of the larger, the whole carcass? Or, or does it, do you think post-packaging is it's probably where possible. it's at? It's certainly possible. What do you think, Kathy? Um, it, from a standpoint of whole carcasses, I mean, there might be some advantages, especially if you're trying to get some reduction early on, but there's always the potential for cross-contamination in the final product. So uh, from my standpoint, from Chris would agree that doing it in a, in a finished product probably makes the most sense. Okay. We don't know about processing environment, what other things might be introduced later down the line. So. Right, right, right. Okay. Um, you mentioned uh, that in your experiments you've, you saw a slightly greater log reduction on leaner meat? Yes. Um, we think that the um, higher fat concentration might have a pr protective effect against the bacteria in the patties and that uh, that's why we didn't see as great a reduction in the 80-20 as we saw with the 93-7. Okay. okay, great. Thank you very much. Yep. All right. Thank, Thank you. you.